Let's apply to Blue Mountain Community College. We'll start at the Oregon Goes to College website and from the College Info tab, choose Apply to College. That takes us to a page that has a lot of really great information about the things that we need to do to get ready to apply, uh, including a list of materials or information we may need to gather to be ready when we sit down to fill out the application, and some tips for how to be successful when we are ready to sit down to fill that out. Um, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a table with a list of all of the colleges in Oregon. Today we know that we're applying for Blue Mountain Community College, and so we're going to click on that link takes me to their website where I will be able to find a link to apply. But I also want to notice that in the lower right hand corner, this little pop up happened. Um, looks like there you have a chat function. So if I have any questions as I'm going through this process, I know that there's somebody who is available to answer those questions, um, who knows all the answers about um, what I may have questions about related to BMCC. So that's good to know. I'm going to scroll all the way down this page until I find a button that says apply for admission. And so here it is. And this is the button to tell us uh, that will take us to the application itself. And so we'll go ahead and click that. And my first task is to enter in my email address. And so I will go ahead and do that now. And click next. Okay, so what this page is telling me is that an email has been sent to my email address uh, and it's asking me for the code to uh, confirm that it is me. And so I'm going to go to my email and find that. And so I can see here, I actually do have an email message from BMCC and I can go ahead and click that. And it tells me that my verification code is this. So I will copy and paste that into the form. I could also just write that down or memorize it and bring it over, but I like to copy and paste. So copy and paste and I can click next. And now I can go ahead and start filling the application out. I'm going to take a quick look to notice that there are some red asterisks and red asterisks uh, typically and I think in this case mean that this is a required question and I won't be able to move on in the application until I answer it. Um, there are going to be some questions that don't have those. If I have the answer to that question and I feel comfortable sharing, I should go ahead and do so uh, just to help keep all of my information in one space and easy to find um, all of my information and, and match it up if other pieces of application or financial aid application are coming together. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this out, my first name, and here they're actually asking for my legal name. And I know that because I can hover over and it tells me that my legal first name is the one that is on my official or legal documents like my birth certificate. So um, there's that and I do have a middle name and so I'm going to type that in here and same with my last name. And again, all of those are my legal names. Here I have the opportunity to provide my first my preferred first name. So if I have a nickname that I would prefer that everybody call me, I can go ahead and enter that here. And if I had a previous last name, I would enter that here. So that might be something like I was adopted and changed my name, I got married and changed my name, or any other reason that I may have had a different last name previously, I would enter that here. And again, that's just to help the college match up things like financial aid applications and my admission application. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my mailing address. And so this is the address where I want mail to come to me. And um, need to provide the county. Now I happen to know what county I live in, but if I didn't know that, I could click on this um, magnifying glass here and it would allow me to look up the county that I live in. But I don't need to do that, so I'm going to go ahead. Oh, maybe I do have to do it that way. And it will allow me to choose it and select. And uh, they uh, filled in that that is in Oregon and I need my address here as well, or my zip code. And the country, and I will choose the United States. 
and click the green button. If I had another address, I would enter that information here. I don't have another address, so I won't do that, but if you had an additional address, you could do that. My email address is filled in from when I started this process, and I do want to just check to make sure that that's correct. It is, and now I'll fill in my phone number, and this is the phone number that I am most likely to answer. If I had a work phone number, I would fill that in here as well, but I don't. Um, my mobile phone number is also my home phone number, so I'm going to actually fill in the same thing here. And um, th this pop-up information is pretty helpful. Let's see if I can get that to come up again. This says that if I want to receive text messages from the college, I definitely need to provide a cell phone number. And um, if I want that, I need to check this box to say, yeah, sure, go ahead, email, uh, text me. Texting from the college would include information if, for example, things like, hey, we're missing this piece of information that we need in order to complete your financial aid award, or hey, we have this really cool thing coming up on campus that we think you might be interested in. So um, just informational texts or reminders from the college. I want those, so I'll go ahead and say yes. And then I need to say who, my, uh, the, what company I, uh, my, my, is my cell phone company. And so I will go ahead and enter that there. Hmm, it didn't like, hmm, it requires the and, so I'll go ahead and choose that. And then we want to give our date of birth. And it is letting me know the format that that should be in, and it's um, either, it's the, you know, two numbers for each of the date and month, and then also the four digit year. I could also choose the calendar option. So if I wanted to do that, I could click on the calendar and it would allow me to move back and forth and choose the right date. Um, I do not have to provide my social security number. This is one of those areas where providing a social, where a question is uh, optional, but I'm actually going to want to do this. If I have a social security number, entering it now is the easiest way for the college to match my application to my financial aid application. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. If I don't have a social security number, I can still go to BMCC. Um, but if I do have a social security number, I wanna make sure to enter it now. This next question is, what was my sex at birth? And so I'm going to go ahead and choose female, but you can choose any answer that is correct or works for you. Same thing on the gender identity. You, I'm going to choose female, but you can choose what is what works for you. Oregon resident, here's some information to tell us what it means to be an Oregon resident. And um, basically, it's that I've lived here for at least 90 days prior to enrolling, and the answer for me is yes, so I'll go ahead and choose yes. If the answer for you is no, you would choose no. Move on to preferred pronoun, and mine are she, her, hers. You'll choose the ones that are right for you. And um, now these questions about race and ethnicity are optional. I'm going to choose to answer them. If you feel comfortable doing so, you could choose the same. Same with answering this question about speaking a language other than English at home. For me, the answer is no. If you do speak another language, uh, a, a language other than English at home, you may want to choose yes there. First generation student, this means that, um, this is asking a question about whether or not I'm the first person in my family to attend college or whether my parents have ever attended college. I am a first generation student, so I'll go ahead and say yes to that. Uh, and this question about the military is asking whether or not I um, am a veteran or am a dependent of a veteran, and for me the answer is no, but you can see that there are a number of different options. Um, what branch you may have been in or if you are the dependent of somebody who is a veteran. For me, the answer is not a veteran, and we move on. The type of application is um, letting us make some decisions about what kind, this is what kind of application we are submitting. If you are planning to attend college, 
In the fall after your, you graduate from high school, you will be a new degree or certificate seeking student in almost all cases. And so that's what we're going to choose now. And I will have completed high school. This is a question asking about um, what is true when you have filled out, when you start college, not at the moment that you're filling the application out. And my previous education, I again, when I am starting, I will be a high school graduate. Program is a question about what I'm interested in studying. And I'm not 100% sure what specific area I'm interested in, but I do know that I would like to go on to a four-year college, and so I'm going to choose Associate of Arts. You can scroll through this list and see all of the different options that are available at BMCC and choose the one that makes the most sense for you. So let's see if I can actually make that work and choose the Oregon Transfer degree. My expected start term is going to be, again, the fall of 2021. I am graduating in the spring of 2021, and so I will um, enter in the fall of 2021. The high school that I attended is Corvallis High School, and I think that I can probably start typing that in here. And there it is. And click Select. And I'm graduating again, as I said, in 2021. I do not have any prior college experience, and so uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank. Now, these next boxes are um, things that I need to check, and I should only check these boxes if I have read and agree. That, that notice here, acknowledgement, means I've read it and I agree to this. And so before you click these boxes, you'll want to make sure that you click through, you read what you see there and that you agree. Um, I have done that, so I'm gonna go ahead and click through um, for each of these because I've already read through them, but you'll wanna make sure again that you do that before. This last, or I guess it's not the last box, but this next box, the application affirmation, means that everything that I've entered into this application is true. And so I'm agreeing that that is the case, and I'll go ahead and click there. And then this is more information about the Social Security number, and it's basically saying what I said earlier about Social Security, and that is that you don't have to enter it now, but for purposes of financial aid, you are going to need to enter one if you have, if you are a citizen or a permanent resident. Um, and so it's just letting you know about that, but you should read as well. And then go ahead and say, I am not a robot, proving I'm a real person and click next. And now we have submitted our application to BMCC and um, congratulations, we're ready for our next step.